Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Christos was crescent. Christos Christos Brothers and sisters, we come to the Sunday of the paralytic, and the paralytic introduces this theme for us that suggests that we are paralyzed. Anyone happy to hear that? <laughs> Does anyone believe it? We may have some infirmities in our flesh, but we do not like to think that we are paralyzed. When people hear this, there are two reactions to this idea that there is something wrong with us. The one reaction is to deny it because we don't have this experience of life as being somehow not right. Our experience of life is that things are fine and that we should just keep going with what we are doing and perhaps they will improve, but it's very rare that someone is willing to acknowledge that things are not as they should be. The other reaction to this announcement is a affirmation. Yes, things are not right with me. I am decrepit. I am wretched. There's nothing good about me. I am deplorable. I am incapable of doing anything good. And this reaction is completely wrong. But it finds elements of, of tr uh, to support it in the long-standing Christian tradition, which especially as it manifested itself outside of the confines of the church in the West, engaged in an extended meditation on the depravity of mankind. And so we have these two responses, a denial and an affirmation that things are not right with me. And neither of these is good. And neither of them works. And neither of them is what God wants from us. Because when we deny that things are not as they should be, we close the door, as it were, on our own spiritual growth and development. And when we affirm in this extreme way that things are completely bankrupt inside of me, we close the door again on the grace of the Holy Spirit to have any significance within me. Because how can it, when I am so unfit for God to work inside of me and to manifest himself in me, and so for the Christian, the answer to, the, to this question is, yes, there is something wrong. I am paralyzed. Using the paralytic as a metaphor for my condition. But it is not a condition that is uh, irremediable, that can't be addressed, that can't be fixed. It's a condition which comes about because of human weakness and insecurity. But it is a condition which God has therefore blessed and sanctified and is working to overcome and has wrought the greatest work of salvation, which is the incarnation and life and work of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. 
And so we have a responsibility not to render that work which God has done to no consequence. Each of us has a responsibility to go down the middle between these two extremes and to understand that while things are not as they should be, while we all have an element of paralysis, we also all have a responsibility to allow that paralysis to be healed. As Jesus says to the man in this story, go now and watch out what you are doing so that something else he says to him, sin no more. But watch out what you are doing so that something worse does not overtake you. This is the call to a kind of Christian life that we are meant to live, in which we actually care about ourselves and maintain ourselves and do something about ourselves so that God's grace can work in us. If we live in a state of complete denial, number one, the first case, that anything is wrong, we don't need any grace from God then. We can just keep going with what we've got. And we ignore the spiritual issues and the spiritual dimension of life. If, on the other hand, we are convinced that we are so depraved and worthless that nothing good can come from us. We ignore the same spiritual gifts that we have been given because we assume that nothing can come from receiving those gifts. Nothing good can come from them. Not in me, someone who is completely and utterly worthless. But if we go down the middle between these two extremes, we understand that, yes, things are not exactly as they ought to be, but there is a solution. And the solution is to cooperate with God's grace and to allow it to take root in us and to gradually to change us and to shape us and to direct us so that we can do the work that the Father has sent for us to do then we are talking, we are, we are running with gas, as they say. There is uh, the possibility of self-transcendence and of growth. And, but this is so hard for us to accept. We make so many excuses why it can't work. And I think that, unfortunately, many times those excuses are designed to relieve us of the task of doing this work because that task is time consuming and it requires a great amount of effort and it's a redirecting our lives away from the things that we are, would prefer to do, whatever they may be, over to doing the things that God has called us to do. But brothers and sisters, this is the new life in Christ. This is the life that we must admit and take up and live. If we would hear the word of grace from the gospel, if we would see the resurrection of our Lord, like the myrrh-bearing women saw, and respond in a way that makes sense, a way that is appropriate, a way that is respectful for what God has done in us. It is said that God does not create junk. And this is the most important thing to realize, that there is an innate goodness in each of us that we should not deny. Even if we celebrate this, it's not about ourselves. It's about God's work in us. And as inadequate and as inept as we may feel when we are called to this work, that's fine. It's irrelevant also. 
It doesn't matter whether we feel confident or competent to do this work. God has called us to it. We must respond. And, there is, and the, the burden, in a sense, is on God to perfect us. We have to merely allow him to do that work by being diligent, by being responsible, and by caring. Amen. Amen.